well that's it season's over that's a wrap um it's been a fun season and i'm glad really glad that it's, it's gonna get to continue for at least one more week hopefully it continues for four more weeks but we'll just see how everything plays out hoping for the best for these baltimore ravens now with the season being over the regular season being over it's always nice to sort of look back look back at things that we all said before looking back at things that we thought were great things about this team and we thought were maybe not so great things about this team uh, as we prepared uh, for the regular season season now um i'm not going to talk about the things that i talked about with the team because as far as the record that i thought they were going to have that didn't happen but one of the biggest issues that i thought they were going to have it did end up happening but that's not important right now uh, but one of my guys one of my guys he called this thing to the t now granted some situations with the baltimore ravens they changed and that obviously had a big impact on this season but we're going to look back at it uh, and look back at this Ravens season from his point of view what he said before the season and then what he said after and we'll get into that in a couple of minutes but first I got to give a shout out to the newest team keep it clean channel members now real quick special shout out to Base Lord because the other day uh, during a live stream he gifted uh, team keep it clean channel memberships so he gave the gift of allowing five people to become Team Keep It Clean channel members for a month. So that that was really special, man. I really, really appreciated that. I love, um, I've been seeing, uh, I think his name is Keith Lee. I'm sure a lot of y'all have seen him on TikTok. And I wanted to talk about him real quick because he does food reviews. And what he does, uh, he goes to these, he's, I think he's out in L.A., but he goes to these small mom and pop shop, these small businesses, and he goes out there and he reviews their food on TikTok. And he has a big following and whatnot. But I love seeing when social media is used in a positive aspect. It's used in a positive light uh, because he even says, like, for the mom and pop shops, he doesn't want to charge them for anything. He doesn't want to them to he doesn't want to be paid for his reviews from them and he pays for his own food and all of that. I'm like, oh well, that's nice. He just for but for the big companies, he's like, hey, he he trying to get a deal with a big company. Um, but I really appreciate how he uses his his platform, uses his social media presence, whatever you want to call it. He uses his page uh for positivity. So I really, really appreciated that. Um and that just really made me appreciate y'all uh that much more. So like we always say, we have conversations about whatever on here, whatever it might be. Uh, we talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. Uh, but we, we talk a lot, but it's um, and we disagree on stuff. We see things differently, but it's all love, man. So I appreciate y'all. I, I love y'all. Uh, now for the newest Team Keep It Clean channel members, uh, shout out to OMG. Uh, shout out to Mr. Chief, the legit goat, Griffey, uh, Jahans, Ali, uh, Shaking My Head, Kev. Uh, Jamie Marie, who who she actually joined during the uh, during the live stream for the game. So, <laughs> despite how ugly that game was, she says, "You know what? I'm still be a team keep it clean channel member." So I appreciate it. Uh, shout out to Isaiah One Hundred Third. Every single video posting positive messages, no matter what's going on. Every single video. I know when I see his name pop up in the comment section, it's gonna be a positive message. And then shout out to Kevin Murphy. So appreciate. All of y'all, man. I, I really do. The whole team keep it clean. Um, now, timing is everything. It's funny because shortly after the um the game that we lost to the Bengals the other day, uh, Ravens record was officially ten and seven. And my guy Gold Morano, I, I just remember him. I remember an email that he sent to me a, a while back about his season prediction, how he thought things were gonna go. And y'all know what I thought the Ravens record was going to be 12 and 5. I'm like, all right, 12 and 5. I don't expect them to go undefeated. Yeah, it could be better, but it could be worse. But 12 and 5, that's where I'm at. Um, but let's look, let's look, listen to this email that he sent on September 10th, 2022. September 10th, so before the, the day before the season started. He said, It's good to be back at the start of another Ravens season engraving. I look forward to riding through. Uh, with you and team keep it clean once again you may remember that I sent you my prediction of 10 and 7 of that being the Ravens final record not long ago but I noticed that many fans are predicting a 12 or 13 win season I'm curious to know how fans in engraving are deriving their win predictions and again for for that it was just based off of the team based off of Lamar based off of just you know the regular stuff 
It, if Lamar is healthy the whole season, yeah, I, but anyway. He said, are fans looking at the Ravens roster and uh, deducing their predictions based on past performance and the current talent level of the team, coaching staff, and concluding that we can expect 12 or 13 wins? Yeah, that was it. Uh, he said, number two, could fans possibly be basing their predictions on the actual schedule ahead, taking into consideration the degree of difficulty that each opposing team will present? Number three, or could fans be estimating that opposing defenses will have no idea the level of supreme motivation uh, Lamar will be playing with after being jilted by his current team's management? Do fans believe that being spurned by the team for which he has given so much could just be the impetus that will cause Lamar to play out of his mind and will his team to an extra three victories as he plays for his football life in quest to reach his goal of becoming a billionaire. He said he based his 10-7 and 7 prediction not only on the fact that EDC did not make a substantial talent investment on the offensive side of the ball once again and rushing players back from serious injuries for which they need more time to heal, but also on the talent level of our opponents and the parity that exists throughout the league. Uh, we're going to be met with some very serious challenges from, the outside, from outside our division. The Jets... Giants, Panthers, and Jaguars are four games. They are the only sure bet wins in my eyes. So, for that part, he wasn't so perfect. That part, he was two and two. Because he said that the Jets, Giants, Panthers, and Jaguars, those are all games that the Ravens are going to win for sure. Uh, they obviously beat the Jets. The Giants, they had them up by 10 with like, what, four or six minutes to go. Obviously, we know what happened. The Panthers, they won that game. It was really ugly, but they won. And the Jaguars, well, it was a weird game. Um, but... That's, that's when the offense, they started going down the field and driving, getting touchdowns but and scoring and getting the go-ahead points, but then the defense just couldn't hold anymore, and you know how that happened. But anyway, he said, no head coach is more prepared than Bill Belichick, so underestimating him and Matt Judon would be a mistake. So they, they did take care of the Patriots, though, so that was good. Uh, Pittsburgh may have a new quarterback, but they have improved and will be no walk in the park, as we <laughs> certainly saw. Mike Tomlin-led teams are well-prepared and pose a true threat. They will give Ravens a run for their money. Although our D-line may be respectable, we don't have the pass rush to keep Joe Burrow off balance. And, yeah, we, 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 we saw that. Uh, he's putting up 35 or more in both games. Well, no, he didn't. He didn't in either game. And I think, what did they score? Well, uh, yeah, they, they did. I guess they scored over 35, both games combined. But, anyway, uh, Cleveland is stacked with talent. Uh, does Team Keep It Clean predict that we do better than 3-3 three and three in the North? And, hey, that's exactly what they did. They did 3-3 three and because three, they split with every team. One-on-one one with the Bengals, one-on-one one with the Steelers, one-on-one one with the Browns. So they went exactly 3-3. Three and three. Look at that. He said, you, as you have stated, postponing the completion of Lamar's contract only benefits the quarterback because his price will only increase with each passing game. So that was what he sent before the season started. So he was pretty much spot on, man. He was pretty much spot on. Um, the record, not only the, the Ravens record, and, and again, like I said, injuries change stuff. Injuries change stuff, but hey, he got it. He got it. Um, but let's look at what he sent after the season. Uh, he said, uh, <laughs> the Swami speaks. And Graven, we made it to the conclusion of another regular season, and you've made the whole experience that much more fun and interesting once again. Oh, no, I appreciate it, man. He said, now it's time to collect my accolades. As you may remember, you predicted a 12-5 and finish for our beloved Ravens, while I, the new Swami, <laughs> predicted a 10-7 and finish. Well, what do you know? I was perfectly accurate for the second year in a row. I don't know how I keep doing it. Uh, I can't wait for us to make our predictions for 2023 after we learn who our quarterback will be, which coaches, if any, will part, will part ways with the team, and how many of the pending 23 free agents will retire or walk. If EDC will finally institute a new philosophy and scheme, and most importantly, will EDC address what has perennially become known as the team's most uh, preeminent need since 2019, a top five wide receiver. I can't wait to compare predictions again in September. Oh, yeah, for sure. He said, awards, the Gold Murano Award for the best in-season move by a GM, the October 21st trade of Christian McCaffrey from the Panthers to the 49ers. You know, I forget about that one a lot. I, I really do. I forget all about that one. Um, he said, the Gold, the Gold Murano Award for the best late-round draft steal, the San Francisco 49ers, uh, for drafting Brock Purdy uh, with the final pick of the 2022, 2022 draft. Uh, two things the Ravens should learn from the 49ers. Number one, when your team's offense is premised on the running attack, have a true hybrid running back slash wide receiver, uh, like, oh, running back and wide receiver like Debo Samuel and or Christian McCaffrey to complement your field stretching number one and workhorse running back. Roster construction like San Francisco causes defenses to tire quickly and defensive coordinators to lose a lot of sleep. 
Number two, don't load your roster with undrafted backup quarterbacks. That's a recipe for disaster. Instead, be about the business of always searching for quality depth at that position whenever the opportunity presents itself. It's not an insult to your starting quarterback to keep adding quality arms. In-house competition is a good thing. And he put in a little asterisk. In, a 2000, the, in 2005, the Packers had Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers, and Kurt Warner. They had Kurt Warner, too. We had Anthony Wright and Kyle Bowler. Green Bay has always understood the benefits of continuously adding quality arms instead of just warm bodies to fill a roster spot. That's an interesting one right there. But yeah, man, you uh you got it. You got it. You 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 called it and that's what it is. Now, I wonder how you call the playoff record. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs, where you can ask any question that you want to answer in a video like this. If you want to be part of it for the Team Keep It Clean patrons, the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. You don't need to send an email, but for everybody else, if you want to be part of it, you can send an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Do not send it anywhere else, or else your question will be disregarded, thrown away, tossed out. It won't see the light of day. So I appreciate y'all, Team Keep It Clean. Thank you for making it easy. Thank you for sending it to the right emails. And if you send it to the wrong emails, hey, that's on you. I still love you, though. But anyway, Next question came from uh, my guy Marv Hood. He said, uh, "Good morning, Professor and Graven." And this was a reply to his previous question, where he brought up that he thinks Ravens fans are privileged. Um, so there was a there was a lot of conversation about that uh, back and forth. I even got like uh, DMs and stuff from people, not nothing disrespectful or anything like that, but some people like, "Hey, yeah, that video. I, I think Ravens fans are entitled. They are privileged and whatnot." Uh, some people disagree. Some people agree. So yeah. You cause a lot of discourse with that one, but it's, it's fine. Not, not, not any bad discourse. But anyway, he said, good morning, Professor Engraven. I may have to slightly disagree with a few of your takes, most notably failure of accepting your professorship. Have you ever watched Sidney Poitier uh, to Sir with love? No, nah, I haven't. Uh, he said, team, keep it clean. It's like your classroom. You maintain dignity and mutual respect without suppressing self-expression. I know you're a humble dude, but you have to admit even that is a tight rope, yet you pull it off. Look, I don't, I don't do nothing, man. That's that's all. That's all, y'all, man. Straight up, that that that's that's all, y'all. Um, but that's that's all that. That's the biggest thing that we ask for. Now, all we ask for. That's the biggest thing that we ask for, though, is that we can have these conversations like this. We can go back and forth. I have my opinion. Other people may have their opinion, but we express it respectfully amongst each other. That's, that's it. And we and we have fun in the process. Cause it's, it's this is it's it's all fun, man. It's all fun. But anyway. He said, let me start by first acknowledging that what I meant to convey, uh, but by my title of privilege was not so much that many of us are entitled, but that I finally believe it is a privilege to be a Ravens fan, partly because John Harbaugh does more than any other coach I have witnessed with lesser, lesser first 10 draft picks. Uh, one, Ronnie Stanley. Oh, okay, so that's the only time you picked in the top 10. I guess so. It, it has been. Now, I, th I, think you, I think you made that clear. In, in, in your uh, original message But anyway let's, let's continue He said lesser impact free agents Four or few more Campbell, Houston, Peters, uh, Williams Okay you're talking about right now then And lesser Pro Bowl players Eight Andrews, Humphrey, Mosley, Jackson Judon, Stanley, Tucker And Yonder yeah, Ray Rice wasn't a pro bowler But anyway He said of course By lesser I am referring In contrast to almost all Playoff teams Who built their roster With multiple first 10 draft players Multiple pro bowl Free agents and players The Bengals and Rams Had a whole High top 10 pick draft And pro bowl squad Within the last 10 years In turn Harbaugh builds a culture Of accountability Hold up now <laughs> Hold up Hold up now How about that one uh, Grit Discipline and overachievement with late round draft picks strictly um, Some of those things can definitely be called into question uh, Accountability I, I think Ravens are definitely lacking in the, the accountability part um, Grit uh, is it, Their grit has definitely fallen off recently um, They These ain't the same old Ravens uh, Shout out to Eric Weddle Discipline, mm. the discipline. Mm. That's that's been that's been lacking a little bit too. 
Um, that yeah, it ain't. Mm. Uh, and overachieving with late round draft picks strictly. Oh, with late round draft picks strictly. Okay, he just talking about picks from the late round. I I wouldn't even say that. Like the discipline. Okay, well, actually, sometimes on the field discipline. No, a lot of times. But anyway, he said I won't even reference our participation in free agency. Let's not go there. <laughs> Imagine if our offensive line had a young Stanley and Yonda consistently with the other pieces intact. Uh, KC was horrible when the O line was injured in the Super Bowl. Belichick had barely sniffed the playoffs since Brady made a dash for Florida, and he is the GOAT of coaches. So let's forget about Harbaugh's record against Hall of Fame quarterbacks before 2012. That was my mistake. He's done quite well over the past 10 years with lesser talent as opposed to the other premier teams. I just think he deserves a little more appreciation for having a lack of healthy premier talent. I'm not saying by any means our players are slouches. Even Purdy and San Fran is balling. However, he does make the best out of the lesser than elite talent. Uh, <laughs> for example, Frank Walker. <sighs> Goodness. Um, I mean, mm, yes and no. I think uh, when you look at uh, something to see with that, when it talks about the lesser talent, the late round talent, the uh, the depth, I guess, you can look at the preseason. Look at the preseason and look how the Ravens do in the preseason. They don't lose. They don't lose. That's why I said, man, if Ravens treated the regular season like they treat the preseason, oh, they'd be undefeated every year. We, we'd be talking Super Bowls every single year. We Oh, we would love it. We would love it. But, I mean, yeah, give, give Harbaugh credit for what he's accomplished uh, but his biggest accomplishments were in the past. I see what you're saying. Oh yeah, he's he's continued to 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 have a team that's competing and whatnot, and um, they compete in every year with the roster that they have, and a lot of it can be lesser talent. But it, my 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 thing is why why does it always have to be lesser talent, especially on offense, especially on offense? Cause they they be having some players on defense now. And they got a few on offense here and there. Obviously, Lamar, Mark Andrews, and, and J.K. Nice too. But it's like, why? Why? Do, why does it have to be lesser talent? Why? Why do things have to be made harder? And it's like now this time you talked about after 2012, uh, which is great. But it's like, why do we have to? Um, why do things have to be made harder? And then you look at the lack of success. After 2012, I mean, obviously 2012, that's the ultimate success that you can have as a Super Bowl, and you can only go down from there, but why haven't they reached that high, high? Like, I, yeah, I, I give you credit, because the Ravens ain't been, like, losers or nothing like that, for the most part. I know they had some seasons here and there, but they ain't been, like, losers or nothing, but at the same time, they haven't won as much as they probably should have won, especially with some of the rosters that they had. And I think that they should, if they've been doing what you've been saying, they've been doing overachieving with lesser talent, why not add more so you can overachieve with them too? Next question came from my guy, Quentin. He said, I figured it out. Yo, what's good? This Q from H-Town. Oh, shout out to Houston. He said, hope all is well with you and yours, but boy, oh boy, uh, what do you think about this? If after the season, Stevie B fired John Harbaugh for allowing Greg Roman for putting such a bad product out, and now we have to pay Lamar, bring in Sean McVay. I'm sure Lamar would love that, but yeah, what do you think? I don't think it'll happen at all. Harbaugh ain't going nowhere. Um... I, just, I, I don't see any scenario where John Harbaugh is fired from the Baltimore Ravens at all. It, it, it ain't going to happen. I would be extremely shocked if it does. I, I have like a million percent confidence that it will not happen. Um, and as far as Sean McVay, Sean McVay said that he was going to step away um, from the Rams for a little bit. So he's doing the same thing Sean Payton did uh, to where he's, he's retiring, I guess, but the Rams will still have his rights. This He was still contractually obligated to the Rams. So in the event where he does want to come back, he decides, oh, you know what? I do want to coach again. Well, he would have to get traded. So Ravens would have to give up draft picks for a coach. I don't ever see them doing that because they love them draft picks too much. Next question came from Britt. She said, good morning, Graven. I just wanted to first thank you for taking the time to research and deliver the information to us. I know uh, that takes time and effort to do. Also appreciate the clean and respectful way you deliver uh, and run your channel. I appreciate that, Britt. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, she says, okay, so my question is about Giro. If the Ravens decide to give him an extended contract, ooh, and, and it, it is a possibility, man. Ooh, that would be something. That would, ooh, that would set the Ravens world on fire. But anyway, um, do you think the coaches will be able to keep the locker room? Oh, that's a, such a great question. Wow, I, I ain't never think about that. I, I never thought about that aspect of it before. 
how would the locker room feel? Because if you do that, yeah, people, it's obviously been called out a lot publicly. Um, Tyus Bowser put it out there publicly with the, because he ain't had to record that. Tyus Bowser literally saw the papers that somebody on the inside, somebody from the Ravens wrote out. Tyus Bowser literally saw those papers on the ground. I don't know if he put them there. He knows who put them there. I'm sure they probably do. But he saw those papers, proceeded to grab his phone to, and to think about it. Hmm. Wait a minute. I, I'm, I'm a player for the Baltimore Ravens. I play for the Baltimore Ravens. I'm a starter for the Baltimore Ravens. People know me for the Baltimore Ravens. My social media is public for the Baltimore Well, for me, and I'm a Baltimore Ravens player. Proceeded to grab his phone, take it out, go to the camera, or go to Instagram straight. I don't know. Yeah, he probably went straight to Instagram. Proceeded to click on story and proceeded to record the papers on the ground and make sure it was crystal clear that we could all see that they said fire Greg Roman. He did that. He had to go through that whole process. So, yeah, that's a really good question about them potentially losing a locker room. Because if he did that, not about a position coach, not about some strength coach, not about uh, even not even about an equipment manager, somebody, a staff on the equipment. No, he did that about a coordinator, an offensive coordinator. And he knows, he sees, he hears everything that's been said about Greg Roman, good and bad. So for him to do that, like, you would definitely feel like he ain't the only one that feels how he feels. Well, he's not the only one that... Uh, feels what he portrayed that he possibly feels. I can't say how he feels because I don't know. But for him to go through all, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's funny. But that's a really good question. She said, many players lately have expressed their frustration with the offense. I know people either love or dislike Hollywood, but that was the reason he left. Right. It's rumored that Deshaun Jackson requested to be let go. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know about that, but she did say, uh, now don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure that it's true, but it's just a rumor. Yeah, I, I, we all saw the um, the post that he put. So he put something about the politics. He said, y'all got it. Forget the politics or something like that. And it's, it could have been about the locker room, but I, we, we don't know. We won't know till we know. Um, anyway, she said, also, I don't know if people remember, but Lamar expressed frustration some time ago. He mentioned something about the defense calling out the plays while they are playing. Uh, now the frustration has trickled over to the defense. Although we lost the game yesterday, we actually could have won the game. Defense held the Bengals to three points in the second half. Why well, couldn't offense capitalize on that? I know it was a game that would have just been bragging rights, but we could have won that game. Just my thoughts. Yeah, the Ravens could have won that game. But, um, yeah, them turnovers, man. Turnovers were killer in that one. Uh, so thanks again for all your hard work on the channel. But I hey, appreciate it. Um, but, yeah, that's, that, that is a risk that they would run. If they bring back Greg Roman, which, hey, and Ra Ravens like taking some risks. They like taking some risks like that with, like, coaching staff and stuff like that. So um, we'll see. that that uh, Because not only will it possibly impact current players who are already on your team, but also future ones too. Well, some of those future players might not end up being future players because they may be like, oh, they're they keeping him? Okay, well, I ain't even going to think about going there. Next question came from my guy, Lewis. Oh, man. Who, who was your guy, Lewis, the tight end? Oh, I know because I remember, what was it, about a year ago or two years ago when you were sending the questions about him? I cannot remember his name. I know you know who I'm talking about because you were like that tight end's biggest fan. Ah, I can't think of his name right now. But anyway, he said, Beatty. Let's go, Beatty, man. I'm happy for the boy betting on, for boy betting on himself. Hopefully, Lamar comes through in a similar manner. <laughs> Now what if You say you're happy for Tyler Beatty Betting on himself And you hope Lamar comes through In a similar manner So you're saying that you hope that Lamar bets on himself And leaves the Ravens and go somewhere else Next question came from my guy Teddy He said offseason moves Can you see the Ravens trading off some extra pieces To be able to retain Lamar and Roquan Pick up draft picks and get more cap space For example trading Michael Pierce We could always use him But we don't need him with all the young talent now, there's a few guys on the roster that can be moved so we can obtain all the things we require. EDC has been working the cap since he came in. Um, I, 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 I mean, I can always see them trading some extra pieces, but I, I don't know if it will be to, to retain Lamar. I, I could see them all trading some extra pieces, though. Like, um, I think this will be the year with Chuck Clark, where he actually does get traded. 
Um, especially since they really seen Kyle Hamilton. They haven't really seen him in the starting role as safety yet, but he's been looking better and better as the years going on. So it's like, all right, they probably gonna be like, you know what? Let's run it. Let's do it. Chuck, thanks for everything, but that's that. Um, I could see them getting rid of James Prochet. Uh, and with James Prochet, uh, I was just talking to my boy Kev about this this morning. Um, I was saying with James Prochet, it's tough with him because I feel like he's in the same position as Miles Boykin was. Uh, and really, a lot of the receivers, really, because with the offense, the, the offense doesn't give the receivers many opportunities as is. It doesn't give them many opportunities at all. But then on top of that, so if you're like a backup, backup receiver, like a backup, backup, backup receiver, then what you do, because every, already everything that the receivers do, it's already emphasized. There needs to be more emphasis on the receivers, but what they do is already emphasized a lot because there's less emphasis put on them. If you get what I you get, it I know that don't make sense. But since the receivers have so little room for error, they have like no room for error. I mean the passing game as a whole, but with the receivers, they have so limited opportunities. So with, with their limited opportunities, whatever they do good, it's gonna be like, all right, great. Whatever they do bad, it's gonna be like, all right, man, it's gonna be, but it's gonna be blown up that much more. Um, so with James Prochet, similar to Miles Boykin. They just ain't been able to get on the same page uh, with everything going on. But they all, they've also had limited opportunities. But a lot of times when they're out there, it's like it just it doesn't end up working out. Some ends up going wrong more than it goes right. Uh, so I think the Ravens, I, I think they un unfortunately, especially for him. Uh, well, actually, not unfortunately for him. It could actually be a good thing if he gets an opportunity with somebody else. Um, it could be a good thing. But I, I think they will un un unload James Prochet this offseason. Um who else? Uh, you talked about Michael Pierce. I, w I wouldn't see them trading him. I could see them cutting him. Um, I'm not sure how his cap is, though. Uh, who else? Um, but you said in order to retain Lamar and Roquan, um, I, I still right, right now, I mean, I'm a little iffy on them. I'm still iffy on them retaining Lamar. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that. Like, I'm iffy on if I think they're going to do it or not. Uh, I'm leaning more towards that I don't think that they will. Um, I'm leaning like way more towards that side, but we'll see, of course. Um, but yeah, so I guess to answer your question, no, I don't see them offloading people in order to retain La La I was about to say Laquan and Roma. I don't see them offloading people to retain Lamar and Roquan because I don't see them really keeping both of them. Next question came from my guy Justin. He said, What's up? Am I the only one who wanted to lose against the Bengals? I just feel like if we would have won, then they would have blew the. <laughs> Blew the Ravens out of the playoffs But let's rest and get ready I love y'all, appreciate y'all And just like I hope the Ravens are not next week I'm out What a way to end it Question came from my guy Rave Kingdom He said with Bengals fans and Bengals players Accusing the Ravens of dirty plays And with Roquan Smith and other Ravens players Saying they can't wait for next week Is there a possible chance that we might see a classic rival uh, Steelers-Ravens type of game on Sunday next week With the Ravens and the Bengals I think so I think so I think it's definitely going to be uh, one of those could be one of them low scoring games. If Ravens don't like for Ravens to get them themselves the best chance, like I think it would need to be a low scoring game. Well, if Lamar comes back, then there's this. I mean, there's potential for obviously potential for a lot more points. But um, especially though, if he doesn't, if he's not back, they got to keep the points low. They 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 got to. Um, they got to keep the scoring low. Uh, so they, they they cannot turn the ball over, and you know you don't want your quarterback. If it's Anthony Brown, Tyler Huntley, you wouldn't you wouldn't want him going out there playing scared. But you 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 would have to keep the points low. Uh, you got to take care of the ball, um, and you got to get help too. Your, your your offense, especially your pass catchers, they got they got to help you out more too. So, yeah, we'll see soon. And the last question on this episode came from my guy, Kyron. He said, Angry, when I'm sending this email after the Bengals game. I admit I'm nervous about next week's wild card game versus Cincinnati. Oh, you should be. Uh, not only because of how our offense has looked over the last month, but also my brother is a Bengals fan. Oh, yeah, that should be fun. Uh, he said, but I'm actually more confident after today's game. Yes, we lost and turned it over four times. The three in the first half killed us because it led to 21 points for the Bengals. But the defense played great. They held Cincinnati to 17 points in week five and 20 points today. And at times, the offense looked decent today. I believe with a healthy offense uh, that protects the ball, Lamar especially, and the defense playing the way that they have in both Cincinnati games, we can win next week. Yes, I believe after this loss. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Like I said, especially if Lamar comes back. But even if, if, if he doesn't come back, Ravens' chances are very slim, extremely slim. But they still do have an opportunity. They still got chances because, um, yeah, the, like you said, the turnovers. The turnovers just gifted the Bengals points. It made it so easy for the Bengals. But the defense, the defense made it hard. 
So if if the Ravens could just look in, take care of the ball, they'll be in good shape. Yeah.